Yesterday, we got the sense that Mr Putin is beginning to realise that his military options are getting rather limited because he didn't say anything about what else this war might achieve. He was actually quite conservative about defending what the Russians have already taken in the Donbass and in Crimea and in the land bridge in between. And he was, in a sense, I think, probably softening up the Russian public for the idea that they've got to get used to this. This is going to go on for quite some time. And what that means for the Ukrainians is that they have got to be prepared for air attacks that will also go on for quite some time. Overnight, uh, Luhansk was attacked apparently 22 times, and we're all looking at the attacks on Odessa. Seven missiles fell on Odessa overnight. Not actually in, on great militarily significant targets, but what's interesting is that of those seven missiles, three of them were the hypersonic, the Kinzhal missiles, which the Russians have used before. They used them once before on the 19th of March, just to show us that they had them. Last night, they used three of them on targets that were of no great military significance. Perhaps they're tr just trying to show, them, uh, show us again that they've got them, but it seemed odd. It seemed a rather expensive way of, of destroying targets of no great military value. Meanwhile, in the, uh, in the uh, Donbass region, the actual... Uh, offensive goes on. The Russian offensive is building. It's, it's, it's getting towards its peak now, and we can expect in these next two or three weeks to see this battle joined. The Ukrainians are being able to, to launch local counterattacks. They're beginning to hold the Russians in certain places and push them back, particularly further north uh, in, Kersh in um, Kharkiv. For the, for the defenders, defending against an overwhelming attack, there is always a, an interesting problem that they face. Whether to dig in and try and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the attacker and defend every position as fiercely as possible, or whether to trade space for time to actually let the attack come on a bit, draw back a little bit, wait, and then try and hit back hard when the attack has used up ammunition and fuel and some of the momentum has worn off. There's no right answer to that question. That depends upon time and chance and the circumstances and what the local commanders decide. But whatever the Ukrainians do decide over the next two or three weeks, and however the Russians play, the way that their bigger attack will develop will tell us what's going to happen next in the Donbass. And what happens next in the Donbass, between now and, I guess, the end of this month, will go back to President Putin, and that will determine how much room for manoeuvre he's really got, what his military options really are, because so far they don't look terribly good.